Hello again humans, this is Dr. Kai, and this is another episode of Sailing Amongst the Stars. In this episode, we're going to take our comprehension levels all the way up to 100 million light years and try to experience the distances involved in the supercluster of galaxies in which we inhabit. But we're going to build ourselves up to that, and if you haven't done the previous episodes in the Learning to Fly series, I strongly recommend you do, as they are a requirement. Now what you just saw was the brightness turned way up, and that will come in handy later on when we look at some of the other galaxies, but for now let's focus on our own. There is Sol, our home system. The Milky Way is a spiral galaxy and contains many spiral arms, and Sol is located on the Orion Spur between the Perseus and Sagittarius arms. The Milky Way is not alone in the galaxy. In fact, it is quite an average galaxy among many hundreds of billions. It has two companion galaxies next to it, the nearest large galaxies, and they are the smaller than the large Magellanic clouds, and they are irregular galaxies. The larger one contains about 20 billion stars. The smaller one contains about 2 billion, so they are fairly small in comparison to the 400 or so billion star systems in the Milky Way. For the first time in history, let's go and take a look back at the Milky Way from our nearest neighbouring galaxies. The large Magellanic cloud that we just passed through is about 150,000 light years from our galaxy, which is a bit longer than the diameter of our galaxy. And it's about 14,000 light years across, making it about 1% the diameter of our galaxy. And here the smaller one is a little bit further, at about 200,000 light years, and is about 7,000 light years across. They both formed around the same time as the Milky Way. They are captured by the Milky Way's gravity, and they're both irregular because they've suffered many tidal interactions with each other and with the Milky Way. And while I've been talking, I've located a Class M star with a beautiful gas giant around it. And around the gas giant is this little frozen moon with a very thin Krypton atmosphere. Let's land on this dusty, icy moon and look up at the sky and see what we can see. Here's a mountain, and from here I think we'll get a brilliant view. And behold, in a purple and pink sky, the large Magellanic cloud, a crimson gas giant, and there we go, the glorious, majestic Milky Way itself, as seen from another galaxy 200,000 light years away for the first time in history. There's Sol, and it looks so peaceful and so sunny. If only we could have this view ourselves, but it's something that we'll never be able to achieve without things like space engines. Now the goal of these videos in the Learning to Fly series is to learn to comprehend the distances and simply flying from here to there doesn't make much sense because most of the journey doesn't have any features with which to calibrate our senses. So here we are traveling at 30 light years per second and that's a bit slow so let's increase it to 90 light years per second. We can do the distance to Alpha Centauri about 20 times in a second at this speed. And at this speed, it still takes a few seconds to clear the small Magellanic Cloud. But let's speed up now and get into position so that we can use parallax to determine and comprehend some of these distances, which is the only tool we really have when the scales are so large. So let's turn the brightness up a little bit because we're now going to be taking into account other galaxies. And there you can see the backdrop of millions and billions of other galaxies. And now I've turned the brightness way up and now you can see things that normally aren't visible with the naked eye. The halo of the Milky Way. The halo of the Milky Way is the sphere all around it, filled with dark matter, and inside it are many globular clusters of many several millions of stars, all orbiting the Milky Way. And it is a stunning view and it really shows the bare bones of the Milky Way. There's Sol, and you just saw the small and large Magellanic clouds. And there's Sagittarius Dwarf Spheroidal Galaxy, which has appeared many times in our videos. It is actually the closest galaxy, even though it is tiny, not much bigger than a globular cluster. Pay attention to Andromeda, which is 2 million light years away, and you can already see it exhibiting parallax from this distance, although it is very far. Now let's pull out to a distance of about 2 million light years, the distance Andromeda is from our Milky Way, and take a look at the local group of galaxies in which the Milky Way is a member. It would take about 4 hours to get to this distance at the last speed we became familiar with, which was 128 light years per second. Now let's rotate around the local group with our Milky Way as the centre. The two largest galaxies are the Milky Way and Andromeda, which contain their own satellite galaxies. And there's Triangulum, the third biggest, which may be a companion of Andromeda. There are about 50 or 60 galaxies in the local group, 
We can't see all of them at this distance, we're going to have to go a little bit further. So let's zoom out a little bit more to 5 million light years. And here comes Barnard's galaxy and IC 1613 and the Phoenix Dwarf, which aren't the lowest members of the galaxy. Below them, you will find Cetus Dwarf and WLM. And to the top left, you can see the Sextans galaxies and NGC 3109 and Antlia Dwarf, which make up the left quadrant from this angle. There's Andromeda and its surrounding dwarf galaxies, and there's other stuff inside this local group, including some high-velocity clouds. This is the local group. This is just one tiny little part of the whole universe, but it is our home. And for the first time in history, you can see how large it is, thanks to the parallax we get from revolving around it. It is about 10 million light years in diameter. And remember, the last distance that we became familiar with was about 30,000 light years. So this is about 300 times bigger. Still a distance we can possibly comprehend. And as we revolve around it, take note of all the other galaxies. You can see parallax in all of them. All of these galaxies are actually part of the wider supercluster that we are a part of, the Virgo supercluster. And it is a sight to behold. Now let's zoom out to 100 million light years so we can bring into view the Virgo supercluster, the supercluster in which our local group, circled before you, is a part of. You can see how small the local group is compared to the rest of the supercluster as we zoom out. Now our supercluster is one of 100 million in the observable universe, and it contains probably 100 or so of its own groups and clusters. On the left, you can see the Virgo cluster, and the Fornax cluster on the right. There are many more. Let's revolve around it in our typical fashion and observe the parallax, and you can kind of get a feel for how big it is. Although comprehension in this case is probably not the right word, but at least you will have seen it. At least you will have an idea of what our supercluster looks like, something that has never been seen before in this way. Now the Virgo supercluster contains many tens of thousands of galaxies and is about 100 million light years in diameter. So in order to bring it all into view, we need to zoom to a distance of about 150 million light years. And there you go, the Virgo supercluster is highlighted before you. And I'm gonna put on a fisheye lens and increase the field of view so we can actually see that the Virgo supercluster is part of a larger supercluster called the Laniakea supercluster, which itself contains hundreds of thousands of galaxies and is maybe 500 million light years across. This increased field of view also highlights the voids around it, which are vast and very empty. And you can see that this Laniakea supercluster is actually a node within the big walls and big sheets and strands of the galaxy, which we will explore in more detail in the next episode. But as a teaser now, while we've got this in our mind, let's take off and fly beyond the constraints of our supercluster and our local area and get a sense of just how big the universe is. We're only doing a few billion light years, which is only a fraction of the size of the observable universe. But as you can see, it seems to stretch on forever and it is vast. This is just one direction. In the next and final episode of the Learning to Fly series, we will go all the way to the edge of the observable universe, break through our limitations, and finally see the size of the cosmos with our own eyes. Thanks for coming along, and so long humans. <laughs>